in DeFi AI, you can actually use different LLMs and create your very own AI web apps like chatbots and workflows, and you can even publish them. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to be creating three different apps or workflows. The first one is going to be a code converter where we convert code from one language to another language using this app. The second one is going to be about a debugger that we create for a specific language. In our case, will be Python. And the last one would be another workflow where we convert our natural language prompt into database specific queries like a query for Postgres SQL or Snowflake. So let's get started and actually build this generative AI applications without any coding. So we're here at the DeFi AI's website. As always, we're going to go with the pricing first. They have the sandbox plan, which means that you can actually use this for free, or you can go with the professional plan, the team plan, or the enterprise plan. Now, if you note here, in the free plan, you're going to get some restrictions like only 200 messages credit and you can only use models from OpenAI, Anthropic, Llama2, Azure, a few models from Hugging Face and Replicate. And you can't have more than one member on your team. And the maximum number of apps that you can build is only 10. So keep that in mind while you're working on DeFi AI. And I think this plan is pretty good if you're just testing this out. And of course, if you really like this too, why not just go to any of these subscriptions? So with that said, let's actually get started with the free plan here. So I'm going to go and sign up. I'm going to use my Google account here. So once you're done signing up, it's going to land you to the Studios dashboard here. And here you can see all the projects that you've been working on, the chatbots, the agents, and the workflows, whichever project you're working on. If you go to the Explore tab, you can see different templates. If you go to the knowledge tab here, you can create your own knowledge base, which you can later on use. And in the tools tab, you can authorize different integrations. Like you can authorize your Google search. You can authorize Bing. Uh, you can add the integration of your YouTube, like the video statics. And one more thing, you can actually create your own custom tool here. All you have to do is fill in the details here, the parameters, the tools name, description, and the method etc and then you can actually create your very own custom tool here but the focus of this video is going to be about how you can actually create apps using DeFi ai so i'm gonna go and create three different apps using DeFi ai so the first one is going to be a workflow which i'm going to go and create from blank and this workflow what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a code converter so first things first let's select workflow here after that let's just give this a name so it's going to be, let's say, a uh, code converter. And then uh, what you can do is you can add the description. So I'm going to say this converts code into different languages. So I've added this description here. And let's just click on create here. And with that, your code converter is now ready. Now you can actually start working on it. So now the first thing that we need in our converter is going to be an LLM. So I'm going to go and add an LLM here. And now what we need to do is configure the LLM. But another thing that we have to do is just click on start here. And we need to add a few variables. So the first variable that I want is to have a drop down list. So for that, I'm going to go and select this select option here. And here I'm going to go and enter the variable name. So it's going to be the target code. And as for the label, let's say it's just going to be the programming language. So I'm going to go and say it's the programming language that we selected. So after adding the label, what we need to do is we need to add options in the drop down list. So I'm going to go and add names of different languages real quick here. So I have added a few options, although you can add more options. But for the sake of this video, I think this much is enough. So let's go and click on save here. And after that, now what we can do is we can add another variable, which is going to be the input code that the user is going to input. So let's go to paragraph here because the code can be more than one lines. So let's go with input code here or input data. So as for the label is going to be the input and for the max length, I think this should be an undefined length because we don't know how long the code is going to be. So I leave this as undefined. After that, let's click on save here. And now all the variables are set. So we can finally configure our LLM here. So in the system prompt, I've already composed a prompt. I'm just going to go and 
paste that here and explain how it works. So this is the system prompt which says that providing translation capabilities in multiple programming languages, translating the user's input code into the programming language they need. So it says that this is the target code language that we want the code to be converted in and this is the default value or the input code snippet. I'm going to provide this in the description so you don't need to worry about that and with that I think everything is said about the LLM and one more thing to note here is that the output variables they are set by default it's going to be a string with name text so that's what's going out of this LLM. Now after we're done with the LLM what we need to do is we need to add an end module here and here we can finally get the output variable so let's go ahead and add that output variable here and let's add the name so it's going to be output of course and for the variable is going to be the variable that's coming out of the LLM which is this text here so with that our workflow is complete now what we can do is we can try to run this out and check whether it works or not so I'm going to go and select programming language so I want my code to be in JavaScript and as for the input code I'm going to provide a Python code so let's go and paste a Python code here so there you have it, a Python function to find the factorial of a number. So let's go and test this out. As you can see, the results are out. And yes, it converted the code into JavaScript here. And it did a pretty good job at doing that. I'm really impressed. So with this workflow, you can convert any code into any of these languages, which is really mind blowing. And later on, what you can do is you can actually publish it just by clicking here. So it's already published and saved. Now, that was just one workflow that we created. Let's move to the next two workflows. Now that you have the basic knowledge of how things go here, I'm going to go and speed up the process. So let's get started with the second workflow that we're going to create. So the second one is going to be a chatbot that we're creating. And I want a chatbot to solve the bugs in my Python code. So I'm going to go and create from blank here. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be a chatbot. It's going to be Python debugger. So let's go with that and you can actually leave the description as it is and let's go and create this. Now what we need to do here is really simple. All you have to do is add an LLM here then you have to configure the LLM. So I'm going to go and paste in the prompt that I've already composed for this chatbot. So there goes the prompt and don't worry I will provide these prompts in the description. And after that all you have to do is just toggle the memory option here. And then you will get this user input here where you are actually getting the system query which comes from the start here. So with that your LLM is now set up. After this all you have to do is just add the answer module here. And here you will output the string that is coming from the LLM. So I'm going to go and add that here. So it's going to be this text here. And with that your chatbot is now ready. All you have to do is just go and publish this. After you're done publishing it, you can actually run this out. So let's click on run and actually test this out. So there you have it, your Python debugger. Let's click on start chat here. And now you can actually input your Python code here and then debug it. So I'm going to go and paste in a faulty code here. So let's go and do that. And after that, I'm going to go and hit enter. And there you go. It started generating all the report about my code. So it says that there are two main issues with the original code. It describes the issues and then it gives you the corrected version of the code, which is mind blowing. Now I don't have to go to ChatGPT or to any other AI to debug my code. I have my own personalized Python debugger right here available for me. So back at our studio, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another workflow here, which is going to be about creating SQL queries. So I'm going to say just SQL this time and let's go and create this. Now in this workflow, what we're going to do is we're going to have an option of databases and we're going to have a prompt and then we're going to generate a query for that database specifically to that prompt. So let's get started. So the first variable we need is of course the database type. So I'm going to go and select the select option here and it's going to be let's say type of database and for the label is going to be db type so for the option i'm going to add a few options real quick here so i've added three of the mainstream database types here let's click on save so another variable that we need is going to be the default value or the input value that the user enters so i'm going to go with input here and the label should be input and i don't want the max length here 
So let's save that. And with that, our start module is all set. Now let's add our LLM here. So I'm gonna go and add an LLM. After that, let's configure this LLM. So for the system prompt, as always, I've already composed a prompt. So I'm gonna go and paste that here. After that, we don't need to do much. All we have to do is add an end module here. So I'm gonna go and add an end module. And the output variable is gonna be output. And we're gonna set these variables to the text that is coming out of the LLM. And just like that, your workflow is ready. It is as simple as that to create really, really productive apps using DeFi AI. So let's actually go and run this out. So I want my code to be in Postgres SQL. And as for the input, let's say I want to create a table which has four columns. So let's go with that. And the column names should be like name, father name, phone, and address. So let's go and do that. And I wanted to allocate them the right data types. And with that, our prompt is all set. So let's actually test this out. And there you go. It has created the whole query for us through which we can create a table, which is going to be person, is going to have a name, a father name, phone, and address. And all of these has the right data type. And there's even explanation about how this query works. This was how easy it is to actually create your own SQL generator, your Python debugger, or your code converter using DeFi AI. And of course, you can create really much more complex workflows if you want to. But for this video, my goal was to show you the potential that DeFi AI actually has. And I hope I was successful at doing that. If you found this video insightful, hit the like button. Share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below. Ring that notification bell to never miss out on our daily updates. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video. We will continue to curb your skills with the latest tech. Till then, stay curious and keep exploring.